What's the best proof system for formal logic? If you ask a lot of professional logicians, they'll probably tell you it's the sequent calculus. The trouble is, if you're new to the sequent calculus, it can look pretty daunting. And I've got a confession, I found it really difficult to understand what's going on with all those sequent rules. So in this video, I'm gonna give you the method that I used to finally understand the sequent calculus. Okay, we're gonna get going with that right now. So to get a feel for why the sequent calculus is kind of tricky to understand in the first place, let's just look at some sequent calculus rules. Here's a typical one. Okay, so what's going on here? So looking above the line, we've got some sentences on the left and then we've got this kind of inference sign and we've got some sentences on the right. Okay, so maybe we're thinking that we're talking about these sentences prove these sentences. Okay, but we've also got some stuff above the line and some stuff below the line. And in a proof rule, we normally think of that as meaning, well, given some stuff above the line, we infer the stuff below the line. Okay, so are we talking about inferring from this lot to this lot, or are we inferring something up here to something down here. Which are the premises and which are the conclusions? That's the first difficult thing to understand with these sequent calculus rules. And the second difficult thing to understand about a rule like this is, here's our inference sign. So we would expect to have the premises on the left and the conclusion on the right. But on the right, we've also got a bunch of sentences. We've got multiple conclusions. What exactly does that mean? How do you infer multiple things from some premises? So I'm gonna tell you how I got my head around understanding rules that look like this. To build up to this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with some really, really simple proof rules. And we're gonna think a little bit more about what are we really doing with them? So let's take one of the simplest rules of all, conjunction elimination. So we start with an and, A and B, and if we've got that in our proof, we can infer A on its own and we can infer B on its own. Okay, couldn't get simpler than that. Now exactly what we're trying to do in inferring sentences like that depends on what kind of proof system we're doing. So think for a moment about proof trees. If you don't really know how proof trees work, go and take a look at this video up here. I'll give you a quick explanation there. What we're really trying to do in a proof tree is close our branches. And typically we're closing a branch when we see a sentence and its negation. Effectively, we're saying we've got A, we've got not A, that's bad, something's gone wrong, close that branch, and if we close all the branches, we've got a proof. Now that all works fine and good in logical systems where there's a problem with having a sentence and its negation. But not all logical systems are like that, right? If we're working with a paraconsistent logic, maybe it's okay to have A and not A also. So we don't want to assume in our proof system that that's going to be a bad thing. We want that to be an optional rule. So instead of taking A and not A to be as bad as it gets, what we could do is we could have a way of marking the sentences that are good and the sentences that are in some way bad. So for instance, we could tick the sentences that we like or those that we accept, and we could put a cross by the sentences that we don't like or those that we reject. Okay, so in the case of our really simple rule of conjunction elimination, what we could say is if we like A and B, if we put a tick by A and B, then we can extend the proof with an A and a tick, and we can also extend the proof with a B and a tick. And then we would say, kind of in parallel with the proof tree case, we've got a problem when we take some sentence and we put a tick and a cross by it. Something's gone wrong there. And that would be like closing the branch and saying, yeah, maybe we've got a proof there. So this works great with simple rules like conjunction elimination, but not all rules are going to be like that. So think about how you infer an implication, if A then B. Typically what you're going to do is you're going to assume A, try to reason to B, and if you can do that, then you've inferred if A then B. So in other words, we're working there with a bunch of sentences, not just individual sentences. So what we might wanna do is have some way of tracking, these are the sentences that I like, that I've ticked, that I accept, and these are the sentences that I don't like, I've put a cross by, I reject those. We can write down sentences, the ones we like or the ones we accept on the left, and the ones that we don't like, the ones we reject on the right, and we can say, given we've got a proof like this, we can extend it with stuff on the left that we like, like this, and stuff that we don't like that we reject on the right, like this. And now we're getting closer to what our sequent calculus rules look like. So if we're gonna think about rules in this way, what would a proof look like? What is our aim in a proof? Well, think back to the proof tree system, right? We're trying to show that something's gone wrong, a bad thing has happened, like 
P and its negation, not P. In our new system, what we really want to say is there's something bad about liking this stuff and also not liking this stuff. Or there's something bad with accepting this and rejecting this stuff over here. And the thing that you mustn't do, rationally speaking in logic, is accept and reject the very same sentence A. So this kind of thing is as bad as it gets. We're going to start proofs with that, and whatever we can infer from that, we're going to count as a proved sequence. Now, in practice, we don't do sequence proofs from top down, what we do is we start off with what we want to prove at the bottom of our sheet of paper and we work upwards. We might build a tree the way trees actually grow, from the root up to the branches. And what we're going to want is one of these really bad things, accepting and rejecting the same sentence at the tips of all our branches. If we've done that, then we've proved the thing that we started off with. So with this understanding of a sequence, sentences on the left that we accept and sentences on the right that we reject, how are we going to formulate a system of rules? All our rules are going to be introduction rules, showing how to introduce that connective. And we're going to have one rule for that connective over on the left as something we accept. And we're going to have one rule for that sentence over on the right as something we reject. There's also a bunch of structural rules that say things like, doesn't matter which order you write the sentences down in, it doesn't matter if you repeat sentences, we're just going to ignore those for now and just think about some logic logical rules. So let's take the case of negation. What should the rules be if you accept a negation? Well, if you like not A, then you shouldn't like A. So if you accept not A, you should reject A. So in other words, we should be able to move not A from the left over onto the right where it becomes A. And vice versa, right? If you reject not A, then you should be able to move that over to the left where it becomes A. So we can go from not A on the right to A over on the left. So here's another rule that makes good sense within this framework. When should you reject a disjunction A or B? Well, you should reject it when you reject A and you reject B. If you can rule them both out, then you've ruled out A or B. So if you've got a whole bunch of sentences over on the right, then you can put any two of them together with A or B also on the right as something you reject. Now, with only those rules, we can already do some cool stuff. So I want to compare how we go about proving excluded middle, A or not A, in natural deduction, where it's really difficult, versus in the sequent calculus, where it is super simple. Here's a really quick version of how it's going to go in natural deduction. To prove excluded middle in a natural deduction system, we need to use proof by contradiction or indirect proof. So we're going to start off by assuming the negation of what we want to prove. So we start off with not a or not A. Then we're going to make a second assumption, A. From that, we infer A or not A using disjunction introduction. That's a contradiction, so we infer the falsum. We assumed A, we infer the falsum, so we can infer not A. From that and disjunction introduction, we can infer A or not A. That's a contradiction too with our initial assumption that not A or not A. So again, we infer falsum. So from our original negated assumption, we've derived a falsum and using indirect proof, we can infer a or not A. That's really, really complicated and it's not at all natural. So natural deduction doesn't do very well there. By contrast, here's how it's going to go in the sequent calculus. So we're trying to prove this A or not A, which we interpret as rejecting A or not A. So if we're rejecting A or not A, then we're rejecting A and rejecting not A. Given that rule for negation, we can move not A over onto the left. And that gives us this. We've got a proof of excluded middle in three lines. I think it's a really nice feature of this proof system of the sequence calculus that we can prove this central feature of classical logic, A or not A, in such a simple and intuitive way. However, you might say, well, what about logics that don't have excluded middle? Things like intuitionistic logic. Is it going to be baked into this sequence calculus that we have to have excluded middle? So here's a second real really cool feature of the sequent calculus, it's really easy to modify this classical system into an intuitionistic system, which drops excluded middle. So again, let's just contrast this with a system like the tree proofs. If you want to do classical tree proofs, super simple, you can prove excluded middle, no problem. But if you want to do intuitionistic tree proofs, they're really, really complicated. The rules are not intuitive at all. But in the sequent calculus, it's really easy easy to go intuitionistic. All we need to do to block this proof that we did before is ban 
multiple sentences on the right. So we don't change any of the rules. We can still shuffle sentences from left to right with negations coming and going. We just got to make sure that we never have more than one sentence over on the right. And if you think about it, that's going to block any attempt to prove excluded middle. Because the only way of getting A or not A is to have A not A over on the right. So we need two sentences on the right to prove A or not A. We ban that and we've got an intuitionistic system. That's a really nice feature of this whole sequent calculus setup that we've got. So for me, the key to getting into sequent calculus is not to try to understand the rules in terms of this stuff, implying this stuff or inferring this stuff from this stuff, but rather to think about the left and the right kind of equally. We accept the stuff on the left, we reject the stuff on the right, and we're saying if that's a bad situation to be in above the line, then it's a bad situation to be in below the line. That was the key that allowed me to understand all of these really complicated looking rules. So have a go. See if this way of thinking about things makes those weird looking rules make any more sense to you. It's definitely worth doing because the sequent calculus, once you've got into it, is such a great system for understanding how proofs work in logic. So I talked a little bit there about the differences between classical logic and intuitionistic logic. If you want to go a bit further on what the difference is between the two and why intuitionistic logicians don't like excluded middle, go and take a look at this video over here. Thank you so much to all my Ko-Fi supporters for making this content possible. Thank you to you for watching this video and I hope to see you guys back here soon.